A functional specification document includes the conceptual design and is one of the outputs of the planning phase. This document can be used to review estimates about project size and calculate the number of servers, licenses, and work hours. The functional specification helps you communicate the overall design to stakeholders in the organization. There are several layers of design in a Skype for Business Server 2015 solution, including conceptual, logical, and physical design. The further you get into the development process, the more detailed the design will be. For example, during conceptual design, if you anticipate that you need two front-end servers and one back-end SQL server during the logical design, you will drill down to details about the design for each server role. First, let's discuss the conceptual design. The conceptual design depicts the functionality of the major feature of the solution. It captures how the solution will work for both users and administrators. The design team needs to consider the needs of all user profile groups when designing the solution. To determine user needs correctly, the design team must have a clear understanding of the requirements. You can perform requirements analysis by reviewing the documents that you develop during envisioning. You should include business requirements, user requirements, usage scenarios, operational requirements, and system requirements. The design team incorporates these requirements in terms of descriptions that eventually become part of the functional specification. You then need to convert the conceptual design into a logical design. Next, let's discuss the logical design. The logical design provides information on components and roles of the architecture, component behavior, and relationships between the components. In the logical design, you need to convert the content from the conceptual design to an abstract model that highlights the logical objects and entities of architecture. For example, in an infrastructure project, the architect can include a series of block diagrams showing networks, service components, and network connection elements. You can show components that are out of scope of the project, but may interact with the subject of the migration. The logical design helps in refining the requirements that were created in the conceptual design. You now need to implement the physical design from the logical design. Lastly is the physical design phase. The physical design of the solution specifies the logical objects that fit into the specific physical objects of architecture. The physical design includes the anticipated metrics to assess performance goals, uptime goals, and milestones of the solution. For example, the physical design might include metrics for network performance and the requirements to meet these metrics. You might also need to establish the production metrics for various deployment scenarios. The design strategy may include how the existing application or infrastructure implementation will be replaced by the new implementation without violating ongoing service level agreements. It should depict the start point of the current organizational state until the end state environment, showing specific deployment activities. The deployment scenarios must show both the desired end state and the path to reach that end state. You can use the Skype for Business Server 2015 planning tool to create the conceptual design of your Skype for Business Server 2015 implementation. However, before using the planning tool, you need to assess the current infrastructure requirements in detail.